HFM is number one in Singapore. I love Richie HFM, it's so hot. They came a lot of time, a high high. Thank you, 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 thank Tonight, families await the arrival of troops after a year of peacekeeping in Golan Heights. Sadelpa opens post-election coalition offer to other parties. And Fiji's trade policy review almost complete. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. 147 Fijian soldiers serving in the Golan Heights between Israel and Syria for the past year will be arriving home shortly. The men and women are on a chartered flight and are expected to arrive at Nandi International Airport soon. RFMF Chief Operations Officer Lieutenant Colonel Armani Suliano will greet the troops at the airport. Many families and friends have been waiting at the airport since 2 p.m. and are all excited to meet their loved ones. Akosita is with us now live from Nandi. Ako, what was the feeling amongst those family members we just saw? A large turnout is expected at the airport as the chartered plane is expected to touch down any moment now. The soldiers have been away from home for one year and there is a lot of anticipation from their loved ones for their arrival. For many of them, including some medical staff who were seconded, this is their first deployment to a war-torn zone. There will definitely be many stories to share, including stories of their first experience with snow on Mount Hermon. This is the first time Fiji has contributed to the UN Disengagement Forces, UNDOF, efforts to maintain a ceasefire between Israel and Syria as prescri prescribed by the 1974 Agreement of Disengagement. Another group of soldiers are expected to return home when the, so when the second shock of soldiers leave Fiji. Back to you, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Akosita. The Social Democratic Liberal Party has invited other parties apart from the Fiji Labour Party to form a coalition after the election if they win. Chanel Sivan reports Sodelpa will work with any party voted in by the people of Fiji. The political landscape is changing day by day as election day draws nearer. In the latest development, the Social Democratic Liberal Party has confirmed reaching out to other political parties to join hands after elections. We will always respect uh, the will of the people and so we will support governments that do not condone the illegal overthrow of a democratically elected government irrespective of 1987, 2000, 2006. Whichever political party is leading the nation, we will respect that that is the will of the people as long as it has been elected through the power of the ballot box. The Sodelpa FLP collision was already announced about two weeks ago. Now it's made the same offer to other parties. However, Ron Ronro couldn't clearly state whether this includes Fiji First. Uh, in as far as the Fiji Labour Party coalition is concerned, uh, we remain um, that the Sodelpa government will move into elections fighting its manifesto independently. Um, but that we will consider the coalition after the elections uh, uh, has uh, been completed. With campaigning in full gear, a Sodelpa team is tonight in Kandavu, seeking permission to hold meetings and rallies on the island. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama told a campaign rally in Rakiraki last night. The Lysini and Garase led government was removed in 2006 because he and the military could see that the government was failing to move the country forward. Bani Marama told the community the then SDL government tried to bring motions into parliament that could have been detrimental to the people and the nation. He says the military had to step in to remove racial discrimination and move the country forward regardless of race. Voters were also told the military expected Garase to remove racial discrimination. 
Key groups dealing with international trade have done a final validation of Fiji's trade policy framework. A one-day workshop in Suva combined the results of various discussions held since September last year. Ritika Pratap has more. The trade policy framework once adopted will improve Fiji's performance and competitiveness in international trade. The benefits of the policy will trickle down to everyday Fijian. The purpose of this framework is to ensure continuation of a of coordination, coordinated and consistent approach in our national development agenda to better maximize development gains by enhancing our industries, investments, exports of goods and services, as well as our interests in international trade negotiations. The framework will look at reforms and growth, plug some gaps and loopholes, and provide a long-term plan. Some trade policies that exist will continue under the framework to improve the general business environment and enable trade. As far as our long-term vision is concerned, it is government's expectation that the trade policy framework will build on our strategic location or position as the hub of the Pacific and develop a truly internationally competitive, dynamic, vibrant, modern private sector-led economy. It's a comprehensive framework that also makes recommendations on strengthening the labor markets and productivity, trade, education and skills development. The trade policy framework will continue to guide Fiji on this transformation path. Opportunities for growth exist in areas such as tourism, transport, IT, food and non-food manufacturing sectors, financial services, mining amongst others. The draft was endorsed by the Prime Minister last year and since then the Trade Ministry has been in discussions with the private sector, civil society groups and government agencies. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. After the break on FBC News, Tilak High School in Lautoka celebrates 59th anniversary. Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lautoka. Gold FM is number one in Nen. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic here in Suva. Here about Batu Cola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sabi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back, this is FBC News. Major changes can be expected in the Workmen's Compensation Act, which is under review right now. Eleanor Tarangai View reports. The revised law is almost ready. A major change that's likely is the circumstance under which compensation is paid. Currently, a payout only occurs if it's found that an employee's death was not the result of his or her negligence. Under the new system that we want, we want a system where there is no fault. If somebody dies in the workplace, automatically compensation is paid. Because at the end of the day, the dependence doesn't really matter to them what happens. The dependents, their lives need to move on. So the whole system will be better on a no-fault system. Another change that can be expected is an increase in the compensation payout. The compensation amounts have been 24,000 for a long time. Those figures are a bit archaic. Um, it's based on very old law, so all of those things will need to be adjusted. We need to take into account the uh, cost of living today, but also at the same time, we need to take into account the affordability of making a payment. The Labor Ministry also wants a quick response time for compensation payouts to families. Some have had to wait up to two years. Discussions on the review are expected to be completed by the end of the month. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. A six-month-old baby girl died in Lautoka yesterday after she was given herbal medicine by her mother on Monday. Police say the baby seemed ill but wasn't taken to hospital until late in the afternoon when her condition worsened. However, she was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital. Two people are missing at sea after their boat capsized yesterday due to strong winds. The 24-year-old and 18-year-old of Soso village in Yasawa left Lautoka Wharf yesterday evening, headed for Mbotaira Resort. Their boat capsized near Vomo Island and a third person drifted ashore at Muira in Naviti this morning. A search is underway by villages and nearby resorts. 
Tilak High School, one of the more prominent schools in Lautoka, celebrated its 59th anniversary today. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama was chief guest and recounted the early days when education wasn't as easily available. Akusita Tale has the story. Tilak High School in Rasavitongo had humble beginnings in 1955 with only 60 students. Today, enrollment is at 1,130 students, taught by 48 teachers. The school is named after Lokmania Bal Gangadkar Tilak, a renowned educationist and freedom fighter in India. It is very important to know who the father of the school is for everyone in the school. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, so for so many years, the students who have graduated from the school already, they must have this clear picture of whom he was and uh, why, uh, why is the school named as Tilak High School. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama told the students to work hard for the opportunities their parents and grandparents didn't have. Talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents about the struggle so many families had in the past to get even a basic education. They will confirm the countless stories of heartbreak, of families unable to pay their school fees, the pain of children having to be withdrawn from school, the shattered hopes of hundreds of thousands of decent, hardworking families. With 18-year-olds able to vote in the September elections, Bani Marama has encouraged young voters to exercise their right to elect their leader. They can choose to vote for the past, for the backward-looking policies of our opponents who want to restore power to the elite, or they can choose to vote for the future, for the vision of the thriving modern nation that my government is constantly working towards. Students were also encouraged to pursue tertiary education through the Top Scheme Initiative. Akusita Talei, FBC News. We turn to sports now. Here's Jamie. Good evening. Up ahead, Fiji Rugby Union announced its new Chief Executive Officer and Team Fiji ready for tomorrow's Commonwealth Games opening. This and more after the break. <laughs> Leading sports tonight, the Fiji Rugby Union has named Ronronro Tambo Levu its new chief executive officer. The former business executive comes with invaluable experience and has worked in a number of industries locally and in the Pacific. Tambo Levu says he feels privileged and excited to take up the role and enter the world of local and international rugby. He adds his intention is to work, work towards a winning culture in rugby and beyond. Meanwhile, the FRU says Tambo Levu fits the bill as they wanted someone with proven commercial success at CEO level, an innovative business outlook and a passion for rugby. He's a local and someone who's had experiences uh, in a number of uh, uh, work uh, place uh, and even at, at CEO level. So we hope that with his uh, skills, uh, wide base of skills, he'll be able to bring that into Fiji Rugby and uh, take the Fiji Rugby Union forward in partnership with the uh, sponsors that we have, uh, likewise the board and uh, the uh, major unions that we have, the main unions, rugby unions, uh, uh, that we have in, in Fiji. Tambo Levu starts in his new role from August 1st. Tomorrow sees the opening of the 2014 Commonwealth Games. The opening ceremony takes place at the famous Celtic Park with Team Fiji to be led by flag bearer and national lawn bowls rep Litia Tikoi Suva. Fiji will be represented in athletics, bowls, swimming, weightlifting, judo and shooting at the Glasgow Games. Team Fiji making its first appearance at the Games since 2006 say they are looking forward to the Games. So this time tomorrow night will just about be over. 
Wayne O'Connor, our general manager, attended a briefing and a run through of the program last night. They had a dress rehearsal, and he's come back and said, um, We're not allowed to say anything. It's a big surprise, but he said it's going to be very exciting. And all the athletes are getting excited and ready to march onto the program tomorrow evening. The opening ceremony takes place at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Staying with the Commonwealth Games, the absence of the Fiji Sevens team could just work in New Zealand's favour. The Kiwis have never lost the match at the Commonwealth Games and hope to continue this unbeaten record. Meanwhile, FBC TV will air delayed coverage of the opening ceremony and highlights of the day at 10.35 tomorrow evening. Fiji Athletics rep Mbatini Savo Uli Yata has failed to qualify for the semi-final of the 400 meters at the World Junior Athletics Championships. The Natambu High School student finished fifth in his heat, clocking 47.95 seconds. Uli Yata's heat included athletes from Great Britain, Australia and Kenya. The Red Rock 7 side is on a rebuilding phase, having lost several key players to other prominent clubs. The Ngawea Bay side, which has had household names like Sireli Mbombo and Lepani Nambuliwanga play for them, will now try to reclaim its glory days to the new breed of players. Tzale Ndadakadaka reports. Lotera Singer has not lost hope of retaining his Red Rock side back to the top ranks of local 7s rugby. The loss of key players Eroni Sao and Waisake Raselala to the wardens and police teams has not deterred his spirits. Instead, he sees their departure as a positive move for their playing careers. Uh, I think uh, Red Rock uh, is uh, the only door for their future. Because uh, without that, uh, uh, there will be no use. They will become stagnant in the, in the team because they are no, uh, there, is, uh, there is no way out for their future. Because when they're going, they are pretty uh, younger boys are uh, ready to be replaced. The club's coffers was boosted with $1,000 from team sponsors Hot Bread Kitchen for a local tournament next weekend. This competition will serve as a trial ground for these players for what will be a busy schedule later in the year. Right now, so far we are, we are planning to, to go out to Australia for four tournaments, big tournaments there. And we, we are looking forward to win all those before we came back to Fiji on the Coral Coast to be one of the Coral Coast tour. This, is, this will be the third time that Red Rock can win the Coral Coast. The side has high hopes that it can recapture its past success. Rasinga believes the only way to do that is to be obedient and committed to their training. Talento the Kadak, FBC Sports. Still without a sponsor, Cricket Fiji hopes to secure one before its 10 match tour of India in October. This is the first time any Fiji team will be playing cricket in India and a lot of plans are being put in place for Cricket Fiji. The 24-member squad for the tour was also unveiled today. 18 of the players are based here in Fiji, while national coach Shane Ergensen will be visiting the six Australian-based reps before the tour to India. thinking it will be actually me going to them because they'll all be starting their pre-season trainings with their club teams in Australia, so in Sydney and Brisbane and Perth. So I think um, I might struggle to get all the way to Perth, but at the same time, if there's an opportunity, I'll certainly go. Uh, but I'll, I'll be definitely going to Brisbane uh, to see Canal there. Uh, there's also a couple of other players in Brisbane as well that'll be worth having a look at uh, in terms of the future. That was your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> Finance Permanent Secretary Filimone Wangambatha has stressed that tax administrators need to work together and collaborate on the modernization of taxation institutions. Wangambatha said tax administrators are critical to the government and people of the Pacific. He made the comment at the opening of the regional annual tax administrators association heads meeting in Suva. The three-day meet will focus on capacity building and tax agreements between PICs and exchange of knowledge and experiences. Chilly weather today, what were the conditions like, Trish? 
Yes, Jackie, well, pretty cool weather, as in very chilly conditions lately. As we look at our map today, Suva, Savu Savu, had the same conditions with showers all day long. As for Nandi, Lotoka and Ba, had occasional showers in the morning and cloudy skies in the afternoon. As for Lambasa, cloudy in the morning, but later with scattered showers. Today's temperatures, Suva on 22, Nandi 24, Lotoka 25, Ba 24, Savu Savu 22 and Lambasa 30. As for tonight, another chilly night for us, especially for you folks in Nosori, Navua, Rakiraki and Suva will be 16. And as for Tavua, Singatoka, Nandi, Namboiwalu and Ba with a 17. Now with Thursday's forecast, Suva, Savu Savu and Lambasa will have cloudy skies in the morning, but later on might with cloudy skies and fine weather also. Nandi, Lotoka and Ba might have fine weather all day long. For Mariners, a strong wind warning remains in force for Southwest Viti Levu, Korosi and Southern Lao, Yasawa and Mamonuda waters, Vatuira, Kandavu Passage. Picture of the day, sent in by Priti of Tavua, early morning sprinklers on a tomato farm. Now that's a really cool picture. Thanks so much for that, Trish. Our top stories once again. Families await the arrival of troops after a year of peacekeeping in Golan Heights. Sodelpa opens post-election coalition offer to other parties and Fiji's trade policy review almost complete. Now, on to our Fijian Speak segment. This is what some Fijians had to say today. Should, but you must speak in Jesus' way, how Jesus spoke to his disciples. Yeah. How you looked after his disciples. That's the only way forward. Uh, the religious uh, role is that for you to do the right thing, your decision. They don't tell you what to do, but they tell you you, you vote yes, right, uh, Fiji citizen of Fiji. And there you have it, our Fijian Speak segment. Now, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You can also find us on YouTube, FBC TV 2011, and on Instagram, FBC TV. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, text subspace FBC to 777. That's all from us tonight. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Till then, good evening.